Hi everybody, here's the video for the chapter 8 review and actually it has a little bit of chapter 6 in it. Chapter 8 involved parallelograms and chapter 6 had translations but I realized I left the translations out of the chapter 6 video so I'm including them here because the chapter 8 is pretty easy. So you need to know the definition of a parallelogram and a parallelogram is a quadrilateral Okay, so that means it has four sides if both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. So here's a drawing. Okay, so both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. So this angle has to be congruent to this angle, and this angle has to be congruent to this angle. Okay. Now, notice that the angle with the little hash mark in it is not necessarily congruent to the angle without the hash mark. Okay. Now, both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. Both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. So opposite sides and angles are congruent. So this side is, is congruent to this side. This side is congruent to this side, but they are not necessarily congruent to each other. The single slash line is not necessarily congruent to the double slash line. You cannot assume that. Okay, so all pairs of consecutive angles, so that would be this angle here. I'm going to change colors. Okay, this angle would be consecutive to this angle. Okay. And those two angles are supplementary. They add up to 180 degrees. Now, it turns out that these two angles also add up to 180 degrees. These two angles also add up to 180 degrees. And finally, these two angles add up to 180 degrees. Okay, and that's going to come in very handy later on. Okay, both diagonals bisect each other. So what does that mean? So here you have your parallelogram. And here are your diagonals. Now, it turns out that both these diagonals bisect each other. So, this diagonal bisects that diagonal, and this diagonal bisects this diagonal. But they don't necessarily, and in fact, they, you can see that they don't, um, they don't equal each other. So, um, the line, the segment with the double hash mark does not equal, is not congruent to the segment with the single hash mark. Okay. So on the translations, you're need, going to need to know how to translate and dilate a polygon that's on a graph. Okay, polygon, it could be a quadrilateral, okay, it could be a triangle, okay, anything. And you need to be able to both translate and dilate those things. But we will go over that. So here's our first problem. So the instructions are for what value of x is the quadrilateral a parallelogram. Okay, so you're given that this segment is congruent to this segment. So we've got that. Now we have to find an x so that this segment This segment is congruent to this segment. So, and then that way we will satisfy this requirement that both diagonals bisect each other. So, we're going to set 2x plus 3 equal to x plus 7, and we're going to solve for x. So, we're going to combine like terms. We're going to put the x on the left side of the equation and the 3 on the right side of the equation, so we have to make them negative. 2x minus 1x is x equals 7 minus 3 equals 4. And that's it. You're done. 
So these are pretty easy. Okay, now here is similar. Okay, you've got these two segments are equal to each other, so you need to show that these two segments are equal to each other and find the x that makes them so. So you set 4x plus 2 equal to 5x minus 6. Okay, and this time we'll put the x's on the right-hand side because the um, 5 is greater than 4. So we're going to go 5x minus 4x, and then we're going to move the 6. It becomes positive plus 2. 6 plus 2 is 8 equals 5 minus 4 is 1. So 8 is equal to x. Oops, I think we skipped one. Yeah, 10. So here's a kite, but it's a quadrilateral. And kites can be paral parallelograms. And we'll show how that works. So you're given that these two are equal. So now we have to show that these two are equal in order to make sure that both diagonals bisect each other. So 6x is equal to 3x plus 2. Combine the x's on the left. 6x minus 3x equals 2. 6x minus 3x, 3x equals 2x, divide both sides by 3 is equal to 2 thirds. Okay, not too difficult, huh? Okay, now we're going to start working with the angles. So the rule that we're going to use is that all pairs of consecutive angles are supplementary. Okay, that's the only way we can find x, because we see that this angle and this angle, they're opposite and they are congruent, just like it says it would be, okay? But that doesn't help us with x. So what we need to do is remember that if we add x, and we can add it to either this 66 or that 66, it doesn't matter, that that should equal 180 degrees. So x plus 66 is equal to 180, okay, x is equal to 180 minus 66, so x is equal to 114, okay, but you needed to remember, okay, this rule, otherwise you could not find that value of x. Okay, here's similar, so you have two, con uh, You have two consecutive angles, and all pairs of consecutive angles are supplementary. So x plus 3x is going to equal to 180. 4x equals 180. x equals 180 over 4 is equal to 45. Okay, same thing again. So all pairs of consecutive angles are supplementary. This angle is consecutive to this angle. They're right next to each other. So x plus 10 is going to be equal to 2x plus 20. It becomes an exercise in algebra. We'll move um, the smaller x, 1x, over here. So 2x minus x is equal to... Okay, is equal to, we're going to move that 20 over. How did I do that? Oh, psh, good grief. That was a bonehead moon. Sorry, guys. X plus 10 plus 2X plus 20 equals 180. Okay. So x plus 10 plus 2x plus 20 equals 180. Combine the x's, 1x and 2x is 3x. Combine the integers, 20 plus 10 is 30 equals 180. 
3x, subtract 30 from both sides, equal to 150, x is equal to 50. So, okay, that's it for those. Okay, so now we got to find both x and y. So we're dealing with two variables. Okay, here's our x, here's our y. And we know from the rules that both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. So x's opposite side is equal to 9, so x is equal to 9. y's opposite side is 15, so y equals 15. Okay. So here, in number 4, we know n's opposite side is 12, so n is equal to 12. And 6's opposite side is m plus 1. So m plus 1 is going to be equal to 6. So m is equal to 5. Easy peasy. And here we look at the rule. Both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. So the angle opposite to 55 is A. So A is equal to 55 degrees because they're congruent. Okay, it's really easy if you remember the rules. If you don't remember the rules, it's going to be super tough. Okay, so here we're going to use some more rules. So we have two, a pair of opposite angles. We know they should be congruent because of this rule. Why did you do that? Okay, two pairs of opposite angles, we know they should be congruent because of this rule. So 120 is equal to 2p, p is obviously equal to 60. Okay, now here, if we look at the sides first, we know that these two sides have to be equal. So 20 equals z minus 8, z is equal to 28. And we know that these opposite angles need to be congruent. So D minus 21 is equal to 105. D is equal to uh, 126. Okay. And finally, we know that the opposite sides are congruent. So 7 is equal to 16 minus H. Uh, move h over here is equal to 16 minus 7, h equals 9. Okay, we know the opposite angles are congruent. So g plus 4 equals 65, g equals 61. Okay, easy peasy, just a little bit of algebra and these two rules, and you got them all made. Okay, one more set. So find the value of each variable in the parallelogram, okay? So we're looking at the bisectors here. So so this line here has to be equal to this line here. Okay, 5a is, oops, that's an a is equal to 15, a is 15 divided by 5 is 3, and we know that this line has to be equal to this line because they bisect each other. So b minus 1 is equal to 9, add 1 to both sides, b equals 10. Okay, let me change colors, this one doesn't work very well. Okay, same thing here, this Bisector has to equal that bisector, so 4m equals 16, m is equal to 16 divided by 4 is 4. Sorry, the dog's chasing her tail. Okay, so this line has to be equal to this line, and 2n is equal to 9 minus n. Okay, we're going to make 3n equals 9. Adding positive n to both sides, n is equal to 9 divided by 3 is 3. Okay, 
should be getting the hang of this by now, hopefully. So here we have 5y needs to be equal to 4y plus 4. We're going to subtract 4y from both sides. 5 minus 4 is 1. y is equal to 4. Okay, and this has this line has to be congruent to that line. So 3x is equal to 12. x is equal to 4. Okay, pretty easy. Okay, so we're done with that. So let's look at transformations. So the transformation that we're going to review is a dilation. And remember, a dilation makes either makes something bigger or it shrinks it. So, and the way you describe a dilation, I don't do that, is with a scale factor. So you describe a dilation with respect to the origin where k is the scale factor. So if k is greater than 0 but less than 1, so it's a fraction, less than 1, then the dilation is a reduction. Okay, the figure gets smaller. Okay, if the scale factor is greater than 1, then the dilation is an enlargement. It gets bigger. And hopefully this should be ringing a bell in your brain. Okay, you, that re you remember all this. Oh, and this should be create. It's a typo. Okay. So how do we do these? So the instructions are to determine whether the dilation from figure A to figure B is a reduction or an enlargement. Now, the only really tricky part of this is you have to pay attention the direction that they're being dilated. So it says determine whether the dilation from figure A to figure B. So we're going from A to B, okay, is a reduction or enlargement. Okay, if you look at A, A goes across to here. Its length is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And the length of B here is 1, 2, 3. So it got smaller, so obviously it's a reduction. Now the question is, what did we do to 6 to get 3, to the length 6 to get 3? So 6 times the scale factor has got to equal 3. The scale factor is equal to 3 over 6. And we reduce that, simplify that to 1 over 2. Okay, and here's my scale factor. Okay, so here again we go from A to B. Obviously, the, the line from A got bigger to make the line B, so that is an enlargement. Okay, A went from, what, from 2, and we applied a scale factor, and it went to 1, 2, 3. Okay, we were able to count right along, those di right along that diagonal. So our scale factor is going to be 3 over 2. We can't simplify it, so that's it. Okay. So this is a little bit trickier because you're not just dealing with lines. You're actually de dealing with a polygon. So the trick with this is to compare two lines, any two lines in A and B, and remember we're going from A to B. A to B. Yeah, A to B. So A to B, obviously the triangle got a lot larger, so it's an enlargement. The question is by how much? What's the scale factor? So you pick one of these lines and compare them between A and B. And the easiest ones to compare are the ones that are on the lines of the graph. So let's pick this line in A and this line in B. Okay. So we went from A to B. Is that right? And we went from 2 to 
we apply the scale factor. Oops, keep writing X. We apply the scale factor, and it went to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It grew to 6. So what's our scale factor? Well, divide both sides by 2. S equals 6 over 2. S is equal to 3. Okay. Now here, you could pick any couple of lines. So why don't we pick, first of all, why don't we pick these two lines? And first of all, from A to B, okay, obviously the figure got a lot smaller, so it's a reduction. It's easy to tell. Okay, now we could pick any of the one, two, three, four sides. Let's do these two. Here's one side. Okay, so we start in, with A, so in the length of this side is one, two, three. We applied a scale factor, and we ended up with 1. So divide both sides by 3, s equals 1 third. Now, it also would have been fairly easy to pick these bottom lines. And so we went from A to B, so A we choose this line, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we started at 12, we applied a scale factor, and we came up with this line, which is 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so divide both sides by 12, we end up with 4 over 12, which simplifies to 1 third. These two are equal. Okay, because you apply the same scale factor to every line, okay, and sure enough, they are. So we know that we're right. Okay. So now we're going to look at translations. And translations mean, oops, mean up or down, or sideways, or up, down, or sideways. Up, down or sideways, left or right, okay? So here, it says find the coordinates of the vertices of each figure after the given transformation. So, and you, hopefully you remember what we call translated points. So for each of the points, okay, R, S, T, U, we're going to move each point one unit to the right and three units up. So let's start with R. We're going to move 1 to the right, and 1, 2, 3, up. 1, 2, 3, up. And here, here's going to be R, and we call it R prime. Hopefully that rings a bell. Okay, let's do S. So we're going to move S one unit to the right, and three units up. 1, 2, 3. And there is our S prime. Okay, T, we're going to move one to the right and three up. One, two, three. And there is our T prime. And finally, U, we're going to move one to the right and three up. One, two, three. And here is our U prime. Okay, let me erase some of these little lines in here. Because what we're going to do is we're going to check ourselves. Okay, we're going to draw the new figures and see if they look like the old figures and that they've just been moved. So S connects to T. S connects to R. R connects to U. And T connects to U. So sure enough, okay, it's the same figure, it's just the whole figure has been moved one unit to the right and three units up. And that's what you got. Okay, and then you can check what the, um, the new coordinates are. So R is negative one, positive two, check. S prime is zero, four. T is 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, up 1, and U is 2, minus 2. Okay, so this one is similar, except we're going to move 
all these points, um, K, L, M, N, five units to the left and one unit up. So let's go take L, go one, two, three, four, five, and one unit up. There's our L prime. Okay, let's take M and go to the left five. One, two, three, four, five, up one. Okay, and there we are at the origin. Okay. Let's find K prime, one, two, three, four, five, up one. And N prime, one, two, three, four, five, up one, is right there. Okay, so we're going to draw it just to check ourselves. And sure enough. It, the figure is the same. It's just been moved five units left and one up. And we can check our um, our points, say, so our coordinates. So K is negative five. K prime is negative five, zero. Yep. L prime is negative four, up four. Check. M prime is the origin. And N is equal to negative three, one, two, three, minus one. Okay, and that's right there. So we're good to go. So these are nice in that you can really check yourself um, in order to see if you're right. Okay, and so this is just some a little bit more of the same. So four units left, one oh, out that. Okay, four units left, one, two. What are you doing? Oh, that would help. Okay, four units left. One, two, three, four. Four units up. One, two, three, four. There's J prime. Okay, K prime. Four units left. One, one, two, three, four. Four up. One, two, three, four. K prime. L prime. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. There's L prime. We got one more. I. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And there's I prime. So you connect them. Okay. There you go. Yep, it's the same figure, just moved over four and up four. And we'll spot check one of the coordinates. So I is negative one, two, three, four, negative one. Here we are, I is negative four, negative one. And in the test, you should check all of them. But just for purposes of this, I'm not going to check anymore. Okay. Number four, very similar. Okay, three units left, one, two, three, three units up, one, two, three. And you can see how that's going to turn out. I'm not going to do this because I'm sure you can do it just fine. And you have the answers down here to check yourself. Okay, so number seven is a little bit different. So, and the fact that you have the answers here obviously makes it a lot easier. You would not have... Okay, so what would be missing on your exam is this would not be there. Okay, so imagine seeing this problem without the information that's in that box. So they want you to graph the image of the triangle FGH after dilation with a scale factor of 5. So we notice that 5 is greater than 1, so we know this the figure is going to get larger. This is going to make it bigger. Okay? So if we get something that looks smaller, you know you did something wrong. So in order to do the dilation, okay, you're going to have to figure out what your points are. So, and they did this for you. So F, and also another thing to be careful here, notice that on the lines... The lines go by twos, two, four, six, eight, 
And in the x-axis, and the same thing in the y-axis, 2, 4, 6, 8. So if you just jump in and don't notice that, and you treat these as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, um, it's not going to look right. And you'll end up with an incorrect answer. Okay, so the first thing you do is you find the points, the vertices, as they exist right now. So here we have f is equal to negative 2. The coordinates for f are negative 2, negative, negative 1, negative 2, and up 1. Okay, remember the 1 is just a half of each of those lines. Okay, so we have f is 2 minus 1, negative 2, 1. Now we apply the scale factor of 5. And the thing you have to remember is you need to multiply both coordinates by 5. And so you're going to multiply negative 2 times 5, and you're going to end up with a negative 10. Be careful of your signs. A negative 2 times a positive 5 is a negative 10. Okay, then you're going to take 1, and you're going to multiply it by 5. 1 times 5 is 5. So F prime, your new F, is going to be at negative 10, which we see here. And positive 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's going to be your F prime. Okay. Now G. G is negative 2 to the left and positive 2 up. Okay. So here's G. Now we're going to apply the scale factor. Multiply each coordinate by 5. Negative 2 times 5 is negative 10. Positive 2 times 5 is positive 10. Okay? And so let's plot those. So negative 10, okay, and positive 10. It's going to land us right up here. So this is G prime. Okay? Now H, H is at 2, 2. See that? We're going to apply... The scale factor 5, 2 times 5 equals 10, and 2 times 5 equals 10. Okay, so our new h, our h prime, is going to be up in this corner. Okay, so we connect the points just to make sure that everything looks right. Can't really draw a straight line. And sure enough, we've got a very, very dilated, okay, by five triangle. And that's exactly what we should see. Okay. Okay, so this is similar. So L is at three zero. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, and L prime is at nine zero. And again, watch those, um, okay, you see that each line is worth 2 here, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Okay, M, you applied the scale factor of 3. Okay, so we'll just, 3 times 3 is 9, 0 times 3 is 0. Okay, 0 times 3 is 0, 3 times 3 is 9. Okay, so my M prime is at 0, 9. Okay, negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. 0 times 3 is 0. And so I'm at negative 6, 0. There's my N prime. K, 0 times 3 is 0. Negative 3 times 3 is negative 9. Okay, 0, negative 9. Here's k prime. Connect the dots. And sure enough, we have an exploded quadrilateral. Okay, the scale factor of 3 was greater than 1, so we know it was going to get bigger, and sure enough, it did. Okay. Now, here, there's very similar scale factor of 3. Oh, come on. Yeah. Oh, 
Sorry. Okay. Same thing, scale factor of three, so it's gonna explode. And here are all your coordinates, and I'm sure you're gonna be able to do this one without me having to walk you through it. Okay, that's it for chapter eight and for translation from chapter six. And um, if you have any questions, again, please ask. And if not, I'll start working on chapter, whatever the next chapter is. Thank <laughs> you.